Hey everybody, it's Jochen Haydn, and I'm back with the 4 March 1942 turn 88 of the Lodrick versus Haydn campaign. Of course, this is War in the Pacific, scenario one. So let's get on into this and see what happens this turn. Okay, here we go, March 4th, 1942. Alright, grabs another dot base. Our Coast Watchers are spotting some ships at various places. Oh no. Oh. oh. Oh man. He's got subs down there. He knows we're there now. Oh, this is not good. Not good at all. That would have been so bad if we'd lost that. So we got the rowboat RO62 now camped out at Wellington. He knows we're here. Now we're going to have to get ASW going here. I don't really have a lot of ships to be doing that. That's not good. Oh, come on, guys. Can anybody find the target? Can anybody? Nope. Oh, I got something in there. Yeah, we get absolutely nothing for it. Uh, thunderstorms in the hex. It's nighttime. It would... Waste. It's more come in, but they'll have no luck either. Again, same thing. The weather's... Now that's hurting us. And we're we're flying at extended range here, so we're we're basically packing half the bomb load. So it's incredibly hard to hit. We need a lot of bombers on target to hit. Man, big old goose eggs today. That's disappointing. And uh, the Liberators from Kumak accomplished nothing either. It, this this is what it is, the thunderstorms. Yep, I think it's going to be the story of Luganville tonight. This is no better. We have severe storms over the target. Well, at least something made it in, right? We're not hitting anything, but we, we went in. So that was an extremely disappointing night bombing phase. None of our B-17s in, in Burma got anywhere. Alright, so he just landed at Cebuan on the Philippines. Site of the famous Battle of the Cebuan Sea in 1944. I believe that's where the Musashi was sunk. All right, now we're in daytime. Oh no! Now he's look at the his subs just keep showing up out of nowhere, man. He's he's on to us. We can't land here now. It's just not safe. Oh, man. Look at all those ships we got. <laughs> oh, man. That could have been so bad. This could have been so bad. Another sub? He's got all of his subs of Wellington. How did he know we're going into Wellington? I guess it's kind of obvious, right? I mean, but jeez. Like, how does he just know where my stuff's at? He always knows. His stuff is always where I'm at. I wish I was as clairvoyant as Lodric is. I never am this lucky. My subs don't hit nothing. They don't find nothing. And his always get me. These guys are useless, man. My destroyers can't hit the broad side of a barn. Nope. <sighs> so 
So I-173 fires, fires two torpedoes at Elliot. Thank goodness he was firing at these guys, not the big boys, because he probably would have hit those. And a very inconclusive attack on the sub. Again? Another sub? Oh my gosh. Give me a break already. This is crazy. There, finally we get a hit. Finally, let's go. Nice, nice, nice. Here we go, here we go. So this monster task force I got here does appear that we get a few hits in the RO-33. Doubt it will sink. But man, what a mess. Four subs camped out right there. That, I don't even know where to go now. I am expecting a big port strike at Pago Pago this turn. Well, that, what? Did you see how quick that AM phase went? What was that? Huh. Where's all the where are all the bombers at? Yeah, this is gonna be bad guys. This is gonna be bad. <sighs> no. Oh man. Oh man, this is not good. Alright, let's just get to the point. This is gonna be bad. That's a big raid here. So, 40, 44 bombers, man. No, wait, is that 44? Yeah, 44 bombers. That's a substantial raid here. Um, we have a number of ships that took bombs and are on fire. And these are probably some of the big bombs, right? Yep, a lot of these 800 kilogram bombs, these are deadly. I would not be surprised if a lot of stuff sinks here. And some of this stuff is so important to me. These AKEs are important. And these DDs, I don't have enough of. AKs, it's the stuff that I need. Now, now he's attacking these hexes north of Sion. And he'll be able to get away with it because I don't have anything that can challenge him. Ooh, did you see that? He was reconning way behind the lines. Yeah, that's an issue. I think he's going to go for an air landing or something there. So that PM phase was pretty pretty quiet as well, except for Pago Pago, which I did say was going to happen. There wasn't much that happened this turn. Where, where was everything? Like, why didn't he fly his bombers? What is going on here? What? No ground attack this turn. Wow, we're definitely expanding some bases, though. That's good for us. He, there was no ground combat this turn. This, what a weird turn. Like, nothing really happened. Except for the subs, but. Huh. This was a bizarre turn.
All right, just wrapping up the last of the, uh, okay, so we got a new ship there, new ship there, ACM. Okay, a few new units on the map. Take a look at those. Wow, what a weird turn. You know, I think it's pretty bad when the most exciting thing that happened in your turn was a port strike. <laughs> let's let's look at this. Okay, so aircraft losses his turn zero to two. He loses one Val and one Glen. We lose nothing. Uh, top pilot, no losses. Pilot replacement pool. Looking at the wounded pilots. Looks like we got a, a British and New Zealand uh, pilot. So, Clouston and Wigglesworth. Let's see if we're going to get these guys back. Let's see here. Wigglesworth. Yep. There he is. Coming back this month. And where's Clouston? Clouston. Huh. Where'd he go? Why can I not find this guy? I don't know. I don't know where he went. Maybe you can see him. I'm, I'm just missing it. Uh, still nothing on Tanner B as we've been checking every turn, but we'll keep waiting. All right. So army loss points basically didn't move one bit this turn for either side because there was absolutely zero ground combat. Nothing. Ship sunk. Nothing. We didn't lose one. He didn't lose one. But I think that's going to change in just a minute. So here you go. Take a look. Um, we gained. Uh, well, I, we didn't lose any points. Let, let me put it to you that way. He didn't gain. We didn't lose. Um, yeah. He's 50. A little under 5,000 points ahead at this point. That's it. Hmm. So uh, let's see. Some notable stuff that I was looking at in the. The second report is over here. We have, this is something that may be relevant to us. The 7th RTA Division located at uh, Nakon Rachisama, Rachisima. So we know he's got a, a, a piece of an RTA Division here, probably on garrison duty. The RTA Divisions aren't that great to begin with, and when you have one divided into a third, it's almost like not even a... It's n nothing we need to worry about. So why I think this is relevant is because we have initiated some uh, a small-scale offensive in Thailand, and the intent is to drive all the way down to Bangkok eventually. So it's good to know what's on the way, what units can be brought in front of us to slow us down. All right, next thing I noticed was radio transmissions at... Where was it at? 1849. Let's find 1849, which I think is actually a huge problem. 1849. Radio transmission is detected right here. What do you think that could be? Well, I'll tell you what it is. It's a Japanese sub. So we've got subs out here. So it's good to know for our routing that we don't really want to bring any ships into Colombo via this way. Because if he's got subs in here, he can intercept them coming through. Because he knows, uh, looking at the hexes... That we have to sail through here because we can't pass through and all these hexes because of these red lines. So we know he's got a sub there. Okay. Next thing I want to point out to you was another set of radio transmissions. Let me find it. Okay. 117, 139. That could be relevant too. 117. I'm finding it. 117. 139. Right there. He's got something here. It could be a ship sailing down to Luganville. So hopefully these subs over here. I may want to adjust their their course to, to account for a ship potentially coming down to Luganville this direction. So he's probably going to pass right through here. So we definitely want to move this sub over to the right a little bit try to slow that down so that's why i like the sigint it's good stuff okay last thing i want to point out to you and this one's kind of big 
Seventh Division planning for an attack on the Mayo. Whoa. Um, that would not be good. Granted, we have enough forces to repel at least one division, but I don't want them on New Caledonia at all. And I think we saw some Sigan a couple days ago saying that he was moving his troops into Luganville, and I believe it was the 7th Division. So uh, that's something we definitely need to keep an eye out. If he's moving troops into Luganville with the intent to uh, attack New Caledonia from there, now we know that that's a possibility. The previous turn, we saw some Sigint that suggested that he was planning for an invasion of Ceylon. And now we got Sigint telling us that he may be going for Numea. Now, that doesn't mean he necessarily is going to, but the fact that he's planning for it uh, means we need to be on guard for that. Because if he starts, if we see any ships start to move this direction, we know for a fact that it's it could actually be the invasion that we're seeing. So, uh, good job, Sigint. We needed that stuff. Uh, after reviewing the ops report, there's only a couple little things that I thought were kind of noteworthy here. The first one being that the uh, where is it? The uh, Saratoga has been repaired. I must have missed it. It's in here. The Saratoga has been repaired at Ceylon. Okay, and also we got this unit, uh, this uh, fleet air arm unit at Colombo, which could be cool. We'll go take a look at both at the same time. So we know now that the Saratoga is fully operational again. The Yorktown's got 12 more days, and it's going as fast as I possibly can move it. So, yeah, I wonder if we moved it into Pierside. Let's try that. We're going to go pier side on this. And you know what? It, it gets it down to eight days. And uh, I know a little secret here. Maybe it's not a secret to most of you guys. If you have a port capacity of seven, or it's either seven or eight or higher, you can repair up to five units of, of major damage in port, in, in pier side, not even in the shipyard. So we don't even need to be in shipyard mode to repair this stuff. So I just say this four days of repairs right now. Switching this to pier side mode, so good for me. So we'll have the Yorktown back up and running in eight days. All right, and then this unit that I wanted to show you was the number seven eight eight fleet air arm, and that's these guys here. Uh, they come with swordfish bombers, but I don't think we really want to mess with those right now because they're we're not we're eventually going to run out of them. So what I'm going to do here is upgrade these to Albacore ones. Okay, so now we have Albacore 1s, and now we have the full complement. So we'll start repairing these up, and then from there, we these pilots that you got out of here are no, no good at all. So we're basically going to have to start from scratch here and see if we have anything that's even usable for us. And it does appear that we do have some uh, naval naval bombing pilots that might be good. So let's start moving some of these guys in there. All right, so now we got another uh, fully operational torpedo bombing squadron. What we'll go ahead and do is get these guys training right away on naval attack. Once I have these guys trained up all the way for a naval attack, we'll switch them over to ASW because I like to run my torpedo planes as ASW when they're not torpedoing stuff. All right, so that's really the uh, only really noteworthy stuff that I saw from the uh, the second the ops report and the combat report. So let's talk about the situation. So this term was very strange. There was hardly any bombing. There was no ground combat. I don't think I've ever seen a turn like this before. So here's our position right now. We have 2,000 AV in this hex. All right. We're well on our way to building forts, which is good. For whatever reason, this one can't build forts. I don't really know why. Doesn't really make sense to me. It's dashed out here. It's weird. Maybe because it just moved into the... Oh, this is the one we just moved into the hex. That's why. Okay, I think it'll start building next turn. So this is good, though. We're getting these forts built up. We got good supply. In this hex, we've got 32-something, mm, right? And we're in the process of moving another unit over back to Chungking to get repaired. Uh, you know what? We might as well move this one, too. Because these guys are almost no good for us. And then I'm also uh, balancing out the two uh, hexes right now because we're 
we're a little light here and a little heavy here. So I'm going to move a little more, a couple more hundred AV into this one. And we're going to have about 25 and 25. And that's what we're going to be able to defend the northern approaches to Lanchow with. Hopefully it's enough. So I don't, I don't, okay. Let me, let me uh, explain this here. It's showing that the arrow is not moving this way. I still think he's going for this hex. I think this is just a, a recon issue. We didn't get good recon last turn, so we lost sight of where the troops are at. But I do believe he's still going to continue into this hex. Why wouldn't he? There's absolutely no reason not to. So uh, I still think he's moving into this hex. So we are still going to start planning accordingly for that. And I'm going to start shifting forces into here. And the second that I see what direction he's going in, I'll make the call if it's time to pull chucks on Changsha. Now, one thing I noticed last turn was that he spotted this. He's sending recon aircraft to Chi Kiang. And why is that? I don't know, but it's definitely concerning to me. So I do have these base forces on the way right now. And a Chinese Corps that I'm going to redirect temporarily over to this base because I don't want him dropping paratroopers into here. He's di Remember when he dropped the paratroopers into Hen Yang and what a pain in the butt that was for us? Well, I don't want to deal with that again this time. So I'm definitely going to start getting troops into uh, Chin Kiang or Chi Kiang as soon as possible just to keep him from doing that. Uh, one thing I noticed that's pretty cool is that the supply situation in... Changsha appears to be actually really good for once and it's been a struggle to get supply into this hex, but um, He didn't bomb it at all Last turn so we were able to build the fortifications up um, I don't know what's going on with Lodric right now. I I do have a theory. I Think that he didn't bomb heavily because he's running out of supply It's March 1942. He's been going super hard bombing every day attacking a lot Losing a lot of troops at Changsha. I think his supply situation in China is getting kind of bad. So I think he's pulling back on the bombing rates to save supply. Because each bombing raid consumes supply. Right? And he's launched thousands of bombing raids over the course of the last three months. And that takes a big toll on your supply. So I think the reason why we're not seeing a major bombing rate is for that reason. Which, honestly, is a great thing for us. Because it gives us time to get moved around here. See, we're already moving our troops back. I've decided to abandon these positions down here. All of this. I've given up Pinxiong. He's going to take it next turn. And we're recollapsing and building a line of defense. Uh, basically down through here. In case he in case he tries to push through across this river here. Uh, I just need to be ready for that. And then this is going to be our new blocking position. On this approach into the back door of China. And what I can do is when I get these troops put back in Henyang. I can rail some over here. To help reinforce that. So we're trying to restabilize our lines here. I'm going to try to keep getting recon on these guys. Because I'm, I'm convinced that they are moving for this hex. But I'm not going to stick around and wait for it. We're moving. We're out of here. It needs to be done. So we're going to go here to here. With all these troops. Alright, you good on China? Let's talk about Burma. So my B-17s got lost again. Nothing happened last turn. We did no bombing attacks. But neither did he. We saw no fighter activity, no bombing activity, no activity. Again, I think it might be supply related. Because I can't think of a good reason why he wouldn't bomb something. I think he's out of supply. So we are going to continue pu pushing troops down through here, through here. We're launching an attack from Rangoon through Mole Mine into Rahang. I want to take uh, Uderadit and uh, Pisanukalokule as soon as possible. And once we have a strong position built here, I want to get an airfield built up here and move forward some fighters to protect our troops going in uh, further down this road here. I, I don't know. I'm pretty excited about this so far. We sure haven't seen any opposition to date. Over here in Malaya, the only thing I see is this unit is now in, in Prabo. Prabu? Prabu Muli? Uh, this will fall next turn, and then um, we're just waiting for the shoe to drop and for him to come into Palembang. I still don't understand why he hasn't attacked it yet. It doesn't make any sense to me. We'll have to wait and see what he's waiting for, but uh, you would think by March 1942, uh, you'd want Palembang, right? 
Especially because I don't think he's going to get an auto victory now. So he doesn't need to push for that. He needs to start thinking a late game, long term stuff. And not having Palambang for your late game is going to be a huge problem for him. So he really needs to move on this soon. Okay, so I was expecting an attack on Kendari last turn and it just didn't happen. So I don't know where he's going now. This is moving west. He could be going for Makassar for all I know. But he's... that. I don't know where he's going. This says it's moving west, which is to the left. This is saying it's moving east. I believe this to be that carrier task force that ripped up our planes a couple turns ago. And this is something else. I don't know if he's baiting us or what. He could have long range cap guarding these aircraft, these ships here. I don't know what his plan is. But I don't know if I want to take that bait. We'll have to wait and see. It'll be interesting either way. Other than that, um, nothing super crazy going on here in the Dutch East Indies. We are continuing my buildup of Kupang. So I'm getting some more aviation support in there. I got more troops in there. Look at this. We're actually building up pretty decent like and getting some Australian stuff in here. Uh, and I'm going to continue building this base up because I want to use uh, Kupang as a forward location to attack in the future and it can have up to a size 9 airfield which can be really good for us so I'm gonna go all in on this uh, I'll, it, it's gonna be a really good speed bump, speed bump going into the rest of Australia nothing happening out here guys just some ships coming and going it's been quiet and bizarre and he hasn't done anything in Perth since like the first month of the war I don't know what he know I don't think he realizes what we're getting in and out of here but uh, he needs to come check this out. Get some subs done here or something, right? Alright. So, Australia on the East Coast here has been very quiet. For whatever reason, my little interceptor task force didn't quite make the make the um, intercept here. But now we know what it is. It's one destroyer. I'm hoping it's a destroyed one. So, and I've kind of drawn a path. He's going to be heading almost due north towards Rabal. So I'm going to just do my best to be up here to intercept. I'm going to probably set some patrol zones to head kind of up this way to hope we pick this guy off because I really want to kill it. Okay, so this task force is still sitting here, not doing anything. He's just kind of acting like a guard between New Zealand and Numea. So I'm not sailing any ships here. Now I thought we were protected going in the south side into Wellington, but he has four submarines operating here. He had four submarine intercepts and shockingly, fortunately for us, which, you know, you know how my luck is with subs. His subs did not hit. They hit nothing. They And, it, and they weren't targeting the big stuff. They were targeting uh, DMS's destroyers escort ships and they missed every shot if they had been going after the bigger ships we would have lost it all so we're now safe I have all these guys in the port and we're gonna start unloading look at this 10,000 troops and 22 almost 23,000 tons of equipment into Wellington and a lot of this stuff is very much needed it's infantry it's support units it's a uh, an aviation headquarters big stuff that we really need here to be strong on New Zealand and we'll just kind of condense everything on New Zealand and wait for me to get more escort ships and more more of everything that I need to to operate out of here but now I know that Lodric has got subs probably near Auckland and Wellington so I'm going to start stepping up my ASW game here I'm going to I'm going to blow the dust off some of my army bomber pilot ASW pilots because I have all these B-26s here now so the heck with it. I'm going to get some good pilots on here. Uh, let me show you what I've got to work with. Okay. So if we go to reserve. Check this out. Look at all these ASW trained pilot bomber pilots that I've got. 70s, 68s, 60s. These are the guys that are going to hit. These guys are going to hit hard. And I have more back in the United States that I can transfer back. So um, Lodric is in for a world of hurt when I bring my B-26s down here next turn to... Um, to Wellington and we rip and tear these guys up because look at the look at the damage that these guys can do 
These guys carry three 500-pound bombs when they're doing ASW work. And with really good pilots, he's going to get jacked up. So look for next turn to have my B-26s flying out of both Auckland and Wellington on ASW patrol. And check for some hits because we're going to get some hits. And hopefully we can sink a sub or two. Okay, so the last thing I want to point your attention to, in this area at least, is this situation. This crazy bombing thing. I don't even know if I got a good look at what the units were that were attacking me. Let's see if we can see it. Let's see. Does it tell us who it is? No, I didn't pay good enough attention during the actual animation to see where these, what aircraft carrier this is that's operating, but it, it looks like at least one heavy carrier. Yeah, I think it is. Maybe the Hiryu, the Soryu, something like that. I think it might be the Hiryu, um, but I, this is what he did to us. We're not looking too good here. Um, this AKE, which is very useful to me, is just about to burn down. It's done. There is absolutely no way this ship's going to survive. So what we're going to do is we're going to scuttle it. All right. This AG, I'm going to give it one more turn, but I don't think it's going to make it. Uh, same with the AS Peleus. We're, we're, too, we're too much on fire at this point. I think it's just going to get worse and worse. So I expect to lose these two ships next turn. Um, I'm kind of wondering if it might be worthwhile to do something like this. So let's go to cargo. We'll take the ship that's burning, right? Actually, let's do both. And let's at least un unload what we can out of them before it's too late. We may get a little bit of supply out before they actually sink, but... That's not looking good. Uh, what is looking a little bit better is the fact that uh, the destroyers appear to be intact. So we got this guy in the pier side. I don't think it's going to sink now. They probably got ropes lashed up to it, right? And I have these other three. Um, they're on fire, but not bad. The, I, the kill team might sink because of this flotation damage. So with the 97 flotation damage, system damage 53 and on fire... I'm pretty sure the kill T's a goner. Now, it's a Wix class, and they're not all that great. So if you look at their upgrade, they never really get that good. Maybe in 1943, they get okay, but it's not anything to write home about. So I don't, I'm don't. i not happy about losing destroyers, but if I have to lose destroyers, I'm happy to lose a Wix class as opposed to like even a Clemson. These things aren't that great. So we may lose the Kilty, but I'm going to wait and see. He could could somehow pull out of it. And then the Talbot and the Kennison have a little bit of fire damage, but they might survive. This Peleus, oh, let's do this, a support task force. I don't have a lot of faith that this ship's going to survive either. So we'll attempt to unload what we can out of it before it goes down. So that's our situation at Pago Pago as far as damaged uh, ships goes. But I have a little ace up up my sleeve for next turn I got these two fighter squadrons inbound next turn oh they'll be there by the by this turn coming up I'll have a p39 and a p40e unit at Pago Pago all right with some pretty decent pilots so uh, we're gonna put up a good fight we're gonna put up some cap here and if he wants to go after Pago Pago one more time He's get, we're going to have 50 fighters versus 20 of his. Now, I know that the zeros are better, his pilots are better, but y you can't argue with the numbers. When we have more than a 2-to-1 advantage, I really think we're going to be able to start shooting down some bombers and stuff here, and I think that's it's good. So, Pago Pago may survive uh, another attack with that air cover. <sighs> well, okay, I'm thinking I'm going to end this video now. Um... This was a weird turn. We had no ground combat. We had minimal air combat. Uh, other than the submarines almost getting hits at Wellington, but we dodged all four, which is, again, very abnormal for me to have that kind of luck. This turn was pretty pretty calm. So I'm going to take advantage of the of the break we got. We got a big break in China. We kind of got a break in, in New Zealand. 
no break in, in Pago Pago and definitely a huge break over here in Burma too. So I'll take I'll take it and I'm gonna use that and get stronger for this next turn. So as always, I wanna thank you guys for watching this. Thanks for sticking around for this campaign. I'm so into this and I don't wanna stop. I'm really enjoying what's going on. The back and forth has been fun. So I'm gonna keep playing this thing and I can keep cranking out turns. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.